This is what a 1.2 degree average global temperature increase looks like. And that's where we're at. Carry on as we are, and a three degree catastrophe awaits our species and all others. So, COP26, Glasgow, the first fortnight in November, 30,000 delegates, the biggest diplomatic event the UK's ever staged, arguably the most important humanities ever put on. OK, let's bust some jargon first off, and there's plenty of it. First, the three C's. The Convention on Climate Change was set up by the UN way back in 1992. And that brings us to our second C. Every year, those countries get together in a conference, the COP, the Conference of Parties. And that, in turn, brings us to the third C for contribution. Each time they get together annually at the COP, each country has to put forward its big ideas, its big promise, its nationally determined contribution, or NDC. Jargon apart, it's actually quite simple. We have the majority of the world's leaders coming together in a few weeks to demonstrate that they're serious about dealing with this issue. That's not an opportunity that's going to come back anytime soon. If we can't take this remarkable chance to make real progress, then we've lost the opportunity that is in front of us. L'accord de Paris pour le climat est accepté. 2015 history in Paris. The world commits to holding climate change to two, ideally 1.5 degrees by 2050. So Glasgow is the crucial five-year MOT, delayed by a year by COVID. They don't have to agree any new deal. They do have to commit to make Paris work at last. And we are way off track. A lot have actually improved their, their commitments. Um, unfortunately, the UN just put out a report card where they added up all the pledges and said that instead of reaching a situation in 2030 where emissions are almost halved, they're actually going to be 16% higher. Yeah, we should be 45% cut and we're 16% up. Exactly. Crazy. It's a terrible problem. Since that report though, breakthroughs on methane emissions, US money for emerging economies to decarbonise, China stopping investment on all foreign coal power plants. But two more major things have to fall into place in Glasgow. First, the US and China, the biggest polluters, need to agree radical action for the world to follow. Second, China, which burns 50% of the world's coal domestically, has to stop it sooner than promised. So what will happen? What do we need? Justice! Well, expect two cops, really, both of them equally weird. The polluter! Inside, the main venue, you've got the accredited delegations, official government delegates from all around the world trying to negotiate this legal text. Uh, it's incredibly difficult. Uh, they are literally arguing over the placement of commas and full stops. Outside, you have anybody and everybody who's interested in climate change. Any company, which basically means practically every company now, wants to come and make an announcement about what they're doing. Also, separately, more importantly, it's outside the COP that we're expecting to see big announcements. So this is what that public cop looks like. Stalls, leaders, demos, greenwash, hogwash, facts, and definitely Greta. Finding holistic solutions is what the cop should be all about. But instead, it seems to have turned into some kind of opportunity for countries to negotiate loopholes and to avoid raising their ambition. Countries have come together and decided on their trajectory and committed to dealing with this issue in 2015. Now what we need to see is the ambition, the innovation and the investment to back that up. Some of that comes from negotiators, but honestly, most of it comes from heads of state making new commitments, leaders of major multilateral banks, CEOs of big companies, mayors of major cities, all of those players coming forward, demonstrating their commitment, reaffirming what they're gonna do, showing how far they've come. Those are a big part of what is gonna make COP a success. All that to finalise rules to keep our world heating within 1.5 degrees and pay poor countries to get there too. 195 countries trying to find common ground between completely different points of view. Small islands that are going to go underwater at two degrees and heavily industrialised countries whose exports are completely dependent on selling fossil fuels. And those two different entities have to find common ground and agreement that they can both live with. 
that's really hard. So a flawed, imperfect system for sure. But at global government level, it is all we have and all they have.